Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to the 99 Names of Allah session. We are on now session 22, alhamdulillah. Hope you've been having a blessed final 10 days of Ramadan. And uh, inshallah, today we'll be covering uh, some, some really crucial names that have been lifted up by the sages of past and uh, that really get to the heart of Islam, at the heart of Tawheed, the belief in the oneness of Allah. But last time we covered uh, four, four names of Allah. Al-Hay, the living, the one who lives forever, the one who always exists. Al-Qayyum, the, the one who exists eternally, who exists through themselves, the self-subsistent and reliable. Al-Wajid, the living, the one who, uh, the, oh, sorry, yeah, Al-Wajid um, was the, uh, the one who was uh, the, the all-existing, the all-finding the perfect, the bestower of existence and the perceiver. We lifted up the verse from the Quran, surah, from Surah Duha, that uh, that uh, had, had, he found you lost and guided you. And Al-Majid, the glorious, the praised and the renowned. And so uh, the give us uh, a sense that not just of what we incorporate in our life, but of the God that has created us, of the God that is there for us. And uh, we, we, we lift up, we find comfort in a living God. We find comfort in a living God that exists eternally, but we find comfort in a God that finds us, that comes to find us. So let us go ahead and uh, before we go into the names today, for today, we'll go uh, through the Asma'il Husna. So let me share my screen and inshallah we'll begin with that. And as always, as you're comfortable, eyes closed, eyes open, whatever it is, let's just get in the space. We are now closing into the single digit days of how, how that we have together for the session. So we, we, we soak in these names in a different way and we, we, we try to take away what we can from them. But let's begin here. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah, الذي لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار تكبير الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الهكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيذ المقيت الهسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصع الحكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوكيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقيم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام 
المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع النور الهادي البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور. So we begin with these holy and sacred names today, inshallah. And as I mentioned today, we cover another four beautiful names of Allah. Um, the names of Al-Wahid, Al-Ahad, Al-Samad. And actually, we cover five names today. So, Alhamdulillah. Uh, two days of these the last 10 days, we'll cover five names. And the rest, we'll cover four names. And inshallah, we'll get through the full 99 by the last day of Ramadan. So, Al-Wahid, the one, the one and only. Al-Ahad which is the indivisible, also translated as the one. As-Samad, the eternal, and the one who's always present, the lasting. And then Al-Qadir, the one who is capable of everything, the powerful. And lastly, Al-Muqtadir, the one who has power, who determines everything. So inshallah, we've got five names to cover today. We want to stay on time, so let us go ahead and get started. So Al-Wahid. Al-Wahid is... You know, the one in essence, not just the one as in the one God, but in the one God, you have a oneness, a unity in that one God, that that one God has one essence, that one God has uh, one set of kind of qualities of uniqueness of deeds and everything. Even these 99 names, as diverse as they are, they're the, they're the diverse names of Allah. And so they're contained within this oneness. So the oneness we sometimes have in mind is that, hey, I'm of one personality i'm of one color and i'm of one this we, we we sometimes relate that in our terms and it doesn't make too much sense when we relate it back to allah because allah is not just one color or one thing that we we lift up allah is all this 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 plurality within one within this oneness and so it's a very beautiful concept that we see this this unity of this essence that uh, something that we don't see around but we see a oneness when we think about our creation though when we think about the world around us, we think about what Allah has created, and we think about how all of this, as diverse as it is, as different we look from different people, as different as the vegetation looks, the animals look, the world in and of itself and the universe looks, this all came from one, and this all is still one creation. As much as, as, much as it may look different, at its essence, it still has that oneness. And so this name really is the one that is present in everything, but also reflective in everything. And so the oneness that is here is given so that we might accept all situations, all people, all processes that we're confronted from as nothing more or nothing less than from the divine, from that single source. It might look completely different. It may look completely, uh, you know, something like we've seen before, but these are not just things that are a sign for reflection, but these are things that are a means of recognition, are a means of a gift, are a means of teaching us, as well as a means of healing. We've lifted up the concept of healing in these names and Al-Wahid helps bring about that healing because it's all from the same source. God's uniqueness is reflected in every single aspect of existence, as different as it might be. It might be a rock on the moon, and it might be, you know, a skyscraper here in uh, on earth, but they have the same common origin, as, as separate as they might look. They, they have that same origin there. And we, we find comfort in in this oneness because we truly are connected by the one who is the connecting. And so the root of this word, the root of this word comes from to being alone, to being unique, singular, unmatched, without equal, incomparable, to unify, to connect, to join, to bring together. And so what's derived from this root is Tawheed, the belief uh, in, in one, the belief in oneness, the foundational stone of Islam, the uh, concept of Tawheed. And in, as I mentioned, to Allah belong all these divine names that we've been discussing, the ones that we know, the ones that we don't know. And with this name in mind, we find unity, not just in the creation, not just in Allah, but we find unity in ourselves as well. Remember, we've lifted this up time and time again. These names have the 
external, the ones that, uh, that, that they have their literal meaning, but they also have the meaning that transcends, uh, transcends the metaphysical, transcends the spiritual. And this name, we find unity in our mind, body, and spirit. That uh, the last thing I'll lift up about this name is so many times when we say, oh, I, you know, this is part of my private life. This is part of my public life. This is part of my social life. This is part of my faith life. We, we divide ourselves into all these different spaces and we become different people that we fit into these different spaces. We go into these different spaces and we put on a different face or we put on a different set of values or we put on just a different show for each of these things. And this, this name reminds us that at the end of the day, we're still one. And so it reminds us to be consistent wherever we may be, and not just to adapt as we might and just shed our values in one space or be fully authentic in one space or be fully fake in another space, but to reconcile that, that we need to have unity in our mind, body, and spirit because benefit comes from that unity. And even if we are a diverse set of personalities or a diverse set of uh, characteristics that come out, we keep it within a oneness. You know, we don't, we don't contradict ourselves. This oneness lifts up as we'll talk about in a second. That's not a contradiction. It's, it's something that is a rich, like a uh, kaleidoscope. It's an amalgam. It's not a, just like this, this, these two things can't blend. It's a beautiful mixture, but it's contained within one frame. And so we, we lift that up for ourselves, inshallah, as we connect to the next name, which also talks about, and is also translated as oneness and the one and only. So Al-Ahad is, uh, as I mentioned, the one, the only, the indivisible. Al-Ahad is connected to Al-Wahid like zero is to one that al-ahad is the unmanifested state of unity uh, the indivisible which isn't made which is not made up of like in elements it's it's just this this raw you know unmanifested state of unity that just is and uh it's this unity this unity in which like all names all qualities and their relationships come together and it has that root of making into one to unite to unify to have oneness. And it also has the connection in Tawheed and that everything is a reflection and that unity is within yourself. That as, as much as we might express outwardly, as much as we may think that uh, it's not within us or that the world around us is not so much uh, like a, a unified place, it is actually quite a unified place. It is actually quite a unified place at its essence. At its essence, we see that the world is as such. And so when we lift up Al-Ahad, when we lift up uh, the name of Al-Ahad and Al-Wahid, we see that in this name, in Al-Wahid, in Al-Ahad, we have in the creation, we have in Allah a complete oneness. When we look at the big picture, when we look at the big picture and we see what, what all creation is, what everything is within Allah, it has all come from Allah. It is the one that remains with Allah. And so the last couple of things we lift up about Al-Ahad is Al-Ahad is, you know, the one who has been, the one who will be. We've talked about this in other names, but the one and there's no second to. There's no dependence on another. There's no need for another or no likeness unto it. So it's just that such a, there's that aspect of uniqueness that's there and the aspect of being alone in that sense, not alone like you're left alone, but alone in the sense that there's no comparison to that. And so uh, Al-Ahad can't be divided into parts like I mentioned or any of the parts in, in Al-Ahad distinguish one over the other. They're all in unison there. And so... Uh, and then al and al wahid then is as we mentioned it's like from zero to one al wahid is the appearance of being divisible into separate parts or being consisted of separate parts so you think about the 99 names but you think of allah you have the original but then you also have how allah is manifested in the world in the creation how allah creates and and does so many things and what what the creation reflects back and so uh lastly al, al ahad is to use to refer to the one, the sole one, the one who was not begotten and the one who has ever been alone, the one who has no second, the indivisible. We, 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 we recall the Surah Al-Ikhlas, the Surah Al-Ikhlas in which Allah says that Kul Allahu Ahad, say that your Lord is the one. And so when we say Allah is one, we recognize the creation is one. And when we recognize the creation is one, we recognize that we 
are as well are part of this oneness but within ourselves we are also one so we go into now a, a summit a summit is the eternal the one who is always present the lasting and it's the uh, this name is the one to whom our hearts turn respectfully longing to discover the abundance of goodness and praiseworthiness that is in Allah, this, this glory that is in Allah. And a samad contains a dignity that is in the highest of forms. In the, it's, a, it's in the reflecting of the completeness in the highest forms, the most everlasting, the most timeless, and this real sublime name and quality of Allah. And its root comes from, or has these meanings, sorry, these root, this root has these meanings of betaking on someone to repair to, to turn, to defy, to brave, to withstand, to send up, to resist, to remain unaffected. So there's so many different translations of the, the root that it's hard to find a one consistent, you know, cookie cutter definition for a samad. You have indivisible, but you have completeness of all potentials. You have eternity. You have all these things within this name. Ibn Arabi said that uh, As-Samad is universal support and universal refuge. And so you can just find so many things that are there, but everything flows towards As-Samad, as he said, and in process of return and connection. And this name, when we take it into us, helps us overcome our isolation, helps us feel that universal support, feel that universal refuge and embed ourselves in seeking the refuge of Allah. So it, it, it helps counteract that sense of loneliness, that sense of isolation we may feel, regardless if it's spiritual lo loneliness, uh, just in, intrapersonal loneliness, or if it may be actual just physical uh, loneliness, physical isolation. And so when we feel something is missing, when we think about ourselves and we reflect, we feel something's missing, we feel that there's something hollow inside us. And when we have, when we acknowledge that there's something hollow, it leads to feelings that something in us is empty, that there's emptiness in us. And when we feel a samad, when we feel, uh, you know, a samad, it actually goes against what we're about to do with this emptiness. When we feel this emptiness, you see it in the world, we want to desire to fill it with whatever we can get. If it's with relationships, if it's with uh, something that money can buy, whatever it might be, we try to fill these different holes, these different pores that are opening up in us that, 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 that are just opening up because it's we start to feel something is missing something's missing so we'll get money we'll, we'll, we'll uh, you know buy houses we'll do all this stuff we'll have kids we'll have uh, relationships we'll have all this stuff and we'll try to fill it but we'll find out that that's only good to a certain amount that's only good to a certain amount and the ego begins to take the lead in terms of saying that you you know we, 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 we we're we're in this world we can we can make the most of it and so we fill it different traumas, different vain desires, all that different stuff is now a part of us. So you, you think of like RoboCop, you think of like part man, part machine, whatever it might be that it's not fully human, but it's also, uh, it's not fully just like a divine sense. It, it's made of all these different parts and things like that. So you have a human essence, but now it's been repaired with all the things that have been created in this world. And so it's not just being in this world now you're now of this world. And we also, we lift up how our tradition lifts up that we're not, uh, we, we want to be in this world, but not of this world. But if we do the opposite, if we fill ourselves with the things that are around in the world, we become of this world. And so what we need to do and what Asamad helps with this process is replacing those parts, replacing those parts that will only last for a little bit, that will no, no, no doubt you know, fade away, to replace those parts with that divine filling, to uh, fill those spaces, to invoke that wholeness and to fill the gaps we close the gaps of separation because these holes in us cause anxiety, they cause loneliness, they cause just a unsatisfied desire to fill and fill and fill and to keep consuming. So it reminds us to stay in check, but it challenges us to be better. It challenges us to be more aware and more cognizant, not just of how finite some of these things are around us that we are taking in, but also to understand that it's not the permanent solution. You know, when we when we leave this world, we're not going with our machine parts. We're not going with uh, the the parts that we use to fill up ourselves here. When we when we go, we we have nothing with us besides ourselves in the grave. And when we come out of the grave, we'll have not, none of these possessions that we filled ourselves with. So this name reminds us that what can we do to take with us 
to fill with ourselves that will last here and in the next life. And so as we go to the last two names here, Al-Qadir and Al-Muqtadir. Al-Qadir is, as I mentioned, the one who is capable of everything, the powerful, manifests unlimited capacity and power. Everything in the universe is connected to this power. So you can't put a wattage on this and you can't measure how powerful this is. But uh, the name that we have opens us up and it helps lead to the opening up of possibilities that anything is possible. Not in the sense that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna now go and fly and like jump off my apartment, I can fly, you know, but within, within reasonable within reasonable measure that uh, anything within that, that you set your heart to truly is possible, especially in the spiritual realm, especially within faith, that if you set out to do something, it's within your means to be able to do it. it we're at different capacities. Each of us has different benefits or different privileges and things like that. But this name helps us bring something much closer to us. It grants us that courage. It grants us that confidence. It grants us that strength that takes us from passivity and doubt to activity and certainty. We feel that divine strength working with us within us because Allah is the one who's capable of everything. And from Allah, we seek the ability to do anything. And so it shares that root with Al-Muqtadir that it has meanings of decree, of ordaining, of deciding, possessing strength, power, ability, being the master of, and uh, to be capable of. And the word Qadr, the word Qadr comes from the same root that we associate has the meanings of predestination or fate, uh, however we would translate it in a different sense. But the word Qadr, uh, like Qadr of Allah, that, that comes from this same root. And so it has these meanings, but only we find in this name that only Allah is the one who determines our fate in this life and the next. Allah, not just in terms of knowing that, doesn't just have us in a sense like, okay, this person will be for, here for this long, but Apart from that, Allah knows our mistakes. Allah knows our motives for doing things. Allah knows our shortcomings. Allah knows our successes, both on the worldly and material plane, as well as on the spiritual plane. Allah sees that which other people don't see. He sees our achievements, sees our shortcomings, but is the only one who can really appreciate our achievements and shortcomings. The world can give us recognition for certain things, but Allah is the only one who truly is able to recognize that and measure that and give it its true weight. And so this name really helps us see that not only is Allah someone that has prescribed certain things or determines, we often say like, oh, you know, we, everything is determined. We have uh, Allah knows the fate of everything. But then we think about, you know, Allah knows the fate of everything, but how intimate is that knowledge? Because Allah is also al-alim. Allah is all-knowing. So Allah knows each and every one of the creation from its start to its finish, from its uh, from its wounds to its just uh, its successes and its strengths, and it sees and he sees all of these things. And and so it shows that it's not just a name that has uh, created universe on this time clock and let it go, um, or or set things to a, uh, a an end time but a name that knows the creation, that knows it, each of these moving parts uniquely. And so uh, the, the word of, uh, the word Qudra, the word Qudra is uh, from the same root and it means potential, inherit capabilities and capacities. And what this name takes from us and, and what this name gives us as we see what Allah is with Al-Qadir, not just the one who determines a fate or is capable of everything, but Allah knows intimately each of the mistakes, the, the heart of each of these uh, creations that Allah has, has brought forth. But this word also shows us within ourself that we have that potential, we have inherent capabilities, we have inherent capacities, each of us does. And through, we access them through Al-Qadir. We access them through Al-Qadir to not just uh, set things as they are, not just to control things as they are, not just to do things, but uh, in a sense that the Qadr that we have, the Qadr that we have, the Qudra that we have is our potential. We have that potential. We have inherent things inside of us. So this name helps us recognize and awaken that which is inside of us. And so as we take this name, we then go into Al-Muqtadir. Al-Muqtadir is the one who also has power, but the one who is deter who determines everything. So Al-Qadir, the one who's capable of everything, and then Al-Muqtadir, the one who determines everything. And it completes that divine name of Al-Qadir. Same root, 
Al-Qadir manifests the unrestricted capacity and Al-Muqtadir points out the all-encompassing manifestation of the capacity. Al-Qadir is, as I mentioned, it has that same root. It indicates the supreme ability to make a decree or ordain something while Al-Muqtadir points to the supreme power by which that decree is enacted. So you can see as we closed out with Al-Qadir that there's this potential. And within us, we recognize a potential as well, but we recognize the limitations of some things. We recognize that beyond a certain bound, Allah is uh, Allah is is there for beyond what we may not know in our limited knowledge, uh, Allah is there beyond. But we take comfort in knowing that Allah just hasn't just, you know, just created this and said, go and that's it. Allah, despite being what Allah is and just the, the theology that is there to that can't even describe Allah, Allah still knows the cre each creation, each element moving part so intimately. And so uh, this, this name, as I mentioned, Al-Muqtadir points out that supreme power by which the decree then is enacted. It draws into action. And Al-Muqtadir is the one who is empowered to do whatever their, the, the divine wisdom that has been put forth decides. The one who has power to and the ability to decide the outcome of all matters, but also know intimately the aspect of each thing that is going to commit something, that is going to do something that is a part of a system. And so Al-Muqtadir is also the one whose power then enforces all the decrees and ordains all the course of all affairs. And the one whose decree prevails in every situation at the end of the day. And Al-Muqtadir to say then is an intensive form then of uh, the root of, uh, of, of Qadr, of this Qadr that uh, emphasizes supreme power and it's actively enforcing whatever the divine wisdom decides and whatever the divine wisdom decrees. And the prefix at the beginning, and we have the, 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 the mu at the beginning of, of this name, it points towards that which means, by, by which means something happens or the embodiment of an action leading to the translations like the one that is, the one that does, similar to the, the suffix of uh, the er in, the, in, in, in English that you have like the doer, the, uh, you know, just you have, uh, the subduer, you have different, all, all these different things that come after the, the, the word. Um, and so it indicates the one who does this. And so we have in Al-Qadir, the one who's capable of everything, the one who uh, has all this power, who grants all these things in, in, in this uh, first and foremost range. But then you have Al-Muqtadir that actually carries this out, that practically carries it out. So as we close out uh, with all these names, Alhamdulillah, we've gotten through five here today. Uh, we went through Al-Muqtadir and Al-Qadir, which deal with fate, which deal with power, which deal with determining the fates and, 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 and the capacities of everything. But then you have uh, As-Samad, the eternal who is always present, the lasting. And lastly, we have Al-Ahad and Al-Wahid that lift up the oneness of Allah, not just that we have one God, before many gods or anything like that, but we have one God in whom there has been create, there are, there's unity within 99 names and many more within the same one God. And within these 99 names, creation has been created as diverse as it is from the edge of the universe to Austin, Texas. And it, it, it all is in reflection of the divine, but it's all been created from the divine. So may Allah allow us to recognize these names and to, to lift up these names here. Bismillah. So as we uh, do our dhikr here, so I know we've got five names. So what we'll try and do is a little bit different now. Um, so I will do one of each name. We'll repeat one of each name. So Al-Wahid will do uh, the repetition for, Al-Ahad will do the repetition for, but then the third one will do a combine of Al-Wahid, Al-Ahad, and Al-Qadir, and Al-Muqtadir. Uh, Al-Samad gets its own uh, airtime here. So Bismillah, let us go and begin for the sake of time here. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Wahid, 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 Al-Wahid. 
על אהד, 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 על אהד. אל וואהד, אל אהד, אל וואהד, אל אהד, אל וואהד, אל אהד, אל וואהד, אל אהד. לא אילה אילה אללה, לא אילה אילה אללה, לא אילה אילה אללה, 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 אללה. אל-סמד, 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 אל-סמד. אל-סמד, 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 אל-סמד. יא-סמד, 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 יא-סמד. לא אילה אילה אללה, לא אילה אילה אללה, לא אילה אילה אללה, 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 אללה. القادر 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 المقتدر 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 القادر المقتدر القادر المقتدر القادر المقتدر القادر المقتدر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 So brothers and sisters, inshallah, take these names and really see how not just everything around us is one, but we are one, the creator is one, and everything is connected to this oneness. And find, find comfort, find solace in that we're not alone in this universe. They're not alone wherever we might be spiritually, physically, there's always a connection. So inshallah, we'll see you all tomorrow. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.